Ready? Yep. Okay, first question. This is random, but I love asking people this question, lol. What was your wedding song? Yours by Russell Dickerson. I think we had that song picked out for a while, but yeah. we kind of went back and forth between a few. What was it like to return to COVID being so much worse? I guess that's for you for deployment. Uh, it was kind of weird. COVID was pretty bad when we left. That's when like it like, kind of all kicked off. I got delayed like a month and a half. So it, it took a month and a half off my deployment. But then when I got where I was supposed to go, I was at a clean site, so there was no one with COVID there, and so there was no COVID rules. The only time we ever wore a mask is any time we went into like the dining facility to grab food. Other than that, COVID was non-existent where I was, and it wasn't even talked about. If someone showed even the smallest symptom, we shipped them somewhere else and they quarantined there before we brought them back. Because I was at a very small place with about like 150 people, and if one person got it, it would have spread like a wildfire. But then returning was super weird because I got delayed almost two months just to get home because of my replacements kept testing positive and then coming home it was weird because i'd wear a mask all the time yeah uh just being around people's weird everything shut down which is weird so it's just kind of just in general it's kind of eerie and i remember you saying like you didn't even realize that it had gotten worse like i remember texting you about that and you being like oh i didn't know it was like re-rising yeah. again how do you both feel when you re reunite after deployment and then she put in parentheses the mixture of emotions etc Okay, you can go first and then I'll answer. Uh, I mean, obviously it was a good feeling. <laughs> yeah. Being being away from your spouse for that long kind of sucks. It like almost when you're in the middle of it, it feels like it's never going to end. So when you finally like all of a sudden you're at your end goal. Like my last day, I flew from Baltimore to Chicago and I didn't even realize I had like, I didn't even realize that I was on my last flight because I'd already just taken like 10 other flights before mm. that. I didn't even realize what I was getting ready to do. And then I was like, oh my gosh, like it was finally here. And then when I saw her, it was weird seeing her. It like, was so weird. It was really weird. It was like, almost like, it was like I hadn't seen you in forever, which, you know, seven months is a long time, but mm -hmm. it was a weird feeling. Uh, it like I mean, didn't seem real. I think it no. took a long time to realize like you were high. Like I was like looking at you and I could hear your voice in person and I was like, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was good. I really like, I know there's a couple questions further that I saw about like reintegration and people asking like, was reintegration hard? Which if you don't know, like a lot of people say that can be the hardest part of deployment, just like reintegrating your lives together. I think especially for people that have kids and like get into a routine with their kids and then bringing their spouse back and trying to like, not that it messes up that routine, but it changes things. I don't feel like we really had a hard time with that. Mm -mm. I felt like it was just like you had never left. No, I, I mean, it was, it was weird for me because she had mood when I was deployed. Right. So like the hardest part was getting back and like, like I was lost around the house. Like I didn't know yeah. where anything was. It took me a while to finally get like realize where stuff was. Yeah, I don't think it was hard for us. Like no. I don't really think we changed as people or anything drastic happened. I know some people it can be hard, but I don't know. It just felt like we were back home and it was like we were living our life like normal again. Yeah. Military moves and how it will affect your nursing job in the NICU. So I guess we could talk about England. Yeah, I received kind of orders to the that. UK, but I'm near the end of my contract. I got about a year and a half left, and I would have had to re-up for another four years if I wanted to go to England, which sucks because that'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. But I think my time has come in the military. I'm ready to get out and pursue firefighting outside the military. It's kind of what my dream's always been. So yeah, turned down the orders to the UK, and I'm not re-enlisting. So her, moving like, those. we're moving and all that. We're, we're pretty much gonna not be going to be. Yeah, we'll be staying in Colorado most likely. Unless you get a job in another state. But if he did, so like if we were moving with the military, then that gets me out of my contract at work. So I like, I think I've talked about this before, but I'm in a two year contract. And if I break it, I have to pay like X amount of money to the hospital um, just to pay them back for the education that they've given me throughout the residency program. If he had orders, which he did, they would have broken my contract. So I would have been able to get out of it and move without like any consequences. I wouldn't have to pay the hospital and stuff. That doesn't seem to be happening. I think the only time we could potentially be moving is once you're out of the military. Yeah. And at that point, my contract would be over at work anyway. When Connor is out of the military, would you like to stay in Colorado? Well, there's a nice yeah. question. So, I mean, we have options. Um, For a long time, we said absolutely not. Yeah, we weren't going to just because we were not like cold weather people. Yeah. But we got a really, we started to realize like we have a really good thing going here. And 
we have her job, which is awesome. Yeah. And then a lot. I'm I'm a big fan of a lot of the fire departments around here. I think we started to realize, like you know, I'm, yeah, we were both born and raised near the beach, but we both also really like the mountains. My family will always be in California, so. Mm -hmm. And my family is definitely going to move around. So, so we don't know where they're going. So we know my family is going to stay in California, but it's too expensive for us to move there. Colorado is kind of like a good little central point. We've talked about Arizona, you know, southern Utah, Texas. We even talked about California for a little bit. Just yeah. We, you know, there's options out there, and it all depends on where I can get hired. This is kind of the same question. Does Connor plan on being in the military until he retires? No. So I got a year, year and a half left. I get out in 2022. We're about to hit 2021, so pretty crazy. It's going to come very fast. Yeah. Um, so I got a little over a year left. Do not plan on retiring the military. We have talked about like me staying reservist or guard for like the rest of my like career and still working for a fire department, but I don't really want to deploy any again or debate the risk of that. And with guard and reserve, that's always a risk. So, I don't know. I think I'm just kind of, I'm ready to cut my ties with the military. Don't regret it. Just, you know, I did my time and I'm ready to leave. Pros and cons to living on base versus off base. I mean, we've technically done both now. The military, depending on rank and then the location of the base the military gives you an allowance it's your basic housing allowance they give you an allowance every month to pay for housing uh if you live off base so it's based off of like where your base is at so like where i'm at it's a lot cheaper so the vh isn't that high so mm -hmm. where we were living previously it was a lot more expensive to live because we were living further up towards denver we weren't saving any money because we our like, rent was way more than the bh that we were saving so, so we, we had to start out paying pocket. out of pocket if you want to live on base, you don't get that BAH. They take that. So you so only you just get, like get housing for free, kind of. Yeah. So that's like the pro to it is the housing's taken care of. You don't have to worry about paying a mortgage or any of those types of things. Yeah. You just don't see the money that they would give to you. Yeah. Typically. And they have like a maintenance team. If anything breaks and you don't feel like fixing it, they come take care of it. Yeah. Um, it's like renting an apartment, but it's a house. And, and they just, you just don't see yeah. the money. Opposed to living off base, like you said, the pros would typically be that you can save money because you would try and find a place that's either what you get in BAH or less, and then you just pocket whatever is left over from what they give you. But that wasn't the case with us, so that was kind of a con. It's stress-free and all that, and also works a two-minute drive for me. So. And it's safe. It's very like safe. Like, it's secure. Kind of just depends on what you want. And everything you need on base, like there's, you know, grocery stores, little all these little shops all over the place, so. How he feels about being far from you for so long how does he cope i knew there was like there eventually would be coming back home yeah uh knowing that you're eventually going to be home is like kind of what keeps you running because you just kind of got to get to the finish line it sucks i mean the communication is really the only thing that like you can really do which I'll, can be hard with the time change yeah it was it was that. hard because what, what was our time difference like 10 hours yeah nine ten hours so it was it was hard but um knowing that there's yeah. you know an end to it all is kind of the best way to get through it mm-hmm is Connor eligible to get deployed again? Yes. So I will be eligible for one more deployment rotation. So the way the Air Force does it, we do six month deployments and then you have to be home uh, for six months of dwell time. So you can't be deployed during that six months that you're home. But the second those six months are up, they can send you right back if they wanted to. So I could. Luckily, I work at a place where a lot, everybody wants to deploy. So it's not that hard to turn down a deployment. But I'm at the point now where I hold a very specific rank and there's not very many of us. And to send out a deployment team, you have to send a certain number of each rank. And because there's only two of my rank, it's between me and one other person. So that kind of kind of sucks. But so we'll see. It's a part of going in the military. I hope it doesn't happen again, though. Probably I mean, they're not. not but... super, they don't seem super frequent. But are you allowed to know the location of deployment after he's home? So I actually knew where he was deployed the entire time. But I was one of the only people that was allowed to know. I think technically, like... It was immediate family. So it was her and then my mom and dad, her mom and dad. And that was kind of it. What's the hardest, weirdest thing for you coming home from deployment? Adjusting to the time again. I mean, oh, I woke zone. up the first week at like 2 a.m. every morning. Oh, yeah. When I remember like the first, I think it was the first, Yeah. the first or second, I think it was the first, the first day. I like woke up at like 6 a.m. and realized that he wasn't in our room. So I was like, well, that's weird. So I started walking around upstairs and he wasn't up there. So I came downstairs and all of the lights downstairs were on. The office was playing on the TV. And I'll have to show you guys, but like if you walk from the room we're in now back toward our living room, and then you turn right, you're facing the garage. And so I like turned my head to the right 
and I saw the garage door was open and Connor was in there and his like whole brand new grill was almost completely built. <laughs> and he's like, oh, hey, good morning. Like, what's up? And he'd been up since like and 2 a.m. And I had coffee made and everything. Oh yeah, the coffee was on. Like he was chilling and it was still super early for me, but I feel like you adjusted pretty quickly. Yeah, you there's there was nothing that like was hard to get used to other than like the altitude of Colorado. I mean, I was, I was essentially on a beach where I was at. So going from that all the way up to 7,000 feet kind of is a little rough, but other than that the dryness sucked but yeah. nothing that really was a challenge to get used to again what do you think is you and connor's greatest strength as a couple love your videos by the way well thanks taylor oh i i say it over and over again communication yeah i think we're like relatively pretty easygoing people yeah for the most we're part we're extreme it's pretty easy to get along with us yeah and i think like me it's something i definitely like i'm still working on and i've had to work on a lot but i think connor's helped me through it it's a communication piece so like when i'm frustrated not just like being frustrated and saying like oh no i'm fine because i was that girl for a long time and i still can be but i think that you've pushed me to like over time answer that like no i'm not fine quicker and explain what's wrong quicker and then we talk about it and it's squashed and we're done and it's yeah. easy like we don't really fight no, I don't. I don't think at all. Honestly. No, yeah. The second I'm the type of person, the second I have an issue with something, I need to like figure it out, solve the issue. And be done with so it. So, of course, if someone I could tell is frustrated with me, <laughs> I get them to talk to me. Like, like I will, I will get it out of her. And yeah. It might annoy her, but at the end of the day, it makes it better faster. Yeah. So, we don't go, we don't ever go to bed angry ever. And we're really, like I said, we're pretty easygoing people. So, I think that like it's not often that those things come up anyway. It's not like we're feisty and like super stubborn and like yeah. super passionate, angry people. I don't know. We're just like kind of chill. Did you record Daisy's reaction seeing Connor when he came home? I did. She's like right here, like staring at us. I did. Um, I will like insert a clip of it right here because it's super cute. Thank you. <laughs> Who is that? Come here. Listen. Oh, oh, oh baby. Yeah. Who is that? Oh, oh, why are you coming anywhere? I promise. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah. 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 I'm home, Mama. <laughs> Her weird smile. I know. You know who I am? I need to cry and say so. How often are you on periods of long distance slash deployment and relationship tips for military significant others? So I think for the tips, um, we've kind of touched on it, is just communicating as, being as open as you can. And like, even when he's gone, I think that for me, I really try to go out of my way to make sure like, I don't know, not that I, like don't pick fights. I feel like it's really easy for people to be like, to misinterpret what they're saying or to just be like, you're already stressed out because of the distance and the time difference and like all of those things. So like, just enjoy the time that you have to communicate and make the best out of that and communicate as best as you can. But how often, I think you kind of touched on the deployments being like six months on and potentially six months off. And kind yeah, of off so it's, it all varies based on the job. Um, the Army does nine month deployments. The Marines will do anywhere from six to nine months to sometimes even a year deployments. Uh, the Navy's weird. It's just however long they're out on the boat for. The Air Force, again, we're just, we're six months on, six months off. That's if you're like actively deploying quite a bit. So yeah. I've only, I've been in the military for coming up on five years and I've only been on one deployment, but I've gone to plenty of trainings. I bet about once a year I get sent on a TDY. So like matter of fact, in a couple of weeks, I have to leave to go to Texas for four to two, two to four weeks yeah. for training and all that. And you know, sometimes we get sent away for a week. Sometimes we get sent away for 10 days. Sometimes we're gone for a month. It's really random. It's all based on the job. You know, some jobs constantly, constantly others. get sent out. With my job, it's just, it's a lot of firefighting training, so I get sent all over the country to go do cool firefighting training, but it's not that much. It's for tips wise for that, like you said, being open, but also trusting your partner. Oh yeah, absolutely. Having trust that like, if like they're out and about, like I'm gonna be in Texas for a month without her. Mm -hmm. She's she's gonna trust I'm not gonna do anything stupid when I'm out there. So yeah. having that trust and like not having to question everything I'm doing at all times mm -hmm. is kind of like a big thing. 
and then me for her as well. Future goals now that Connor is home. Too. I mean, obviously we want to start a family. Goals, I want to get out of the military. Mm -hmm. I want to get with the fire department. That's probably one of my biggest goals. Yeah. But, you know. Which that's still a year and a half out, but I don't think we have anything right this second yeah. that we want right now. But just working toward that stuff. What was it like to get the news you were coming home for Thanksgiving? I was supposed to be home in October. Then we got extended another three weeks. They told us we were like, you guys aren't going to be home until November. Then November rolled around. Then they told us our replacements tested positive for COVID. So they're like, so now they're on. They got to start their quarantine over again. So two more weeks and then they'll get tested again. So then it was like, hopefully by early December. Yeah. And they weren't even in like the like on the continent yet they were still in europe quarantining in germany yeah and then the two weeks finally came up they got tested for some reason they like did not tell us the results of the test but they moved them from germany to africa finally to one of our bases in africa and then they got the results and one of them tested positive again it's another two weeks so then all of a sudden now i'm like so after that then i was like okay cool we're, we should be home for thanksgiving and then the results came again and they're like so now you won't be home till like early December mm -hmm. I was and then finally like I was out doing like my job and someone gives me a phone call and they're like hey as soon as you're done you need to come back and start packing you're hopping on a plane tomorrow and I was like what like, yeah he called me at like 2 a.m like the next morning after I told her I got extended another two weeks they he told me like you're we hopping on a plane someone in the higher ups decided screw it We'll send the people that didn't test positive. Yeah. And we'll just quarantine them at the base you're at. And then we'll leave the people that tested positive at where they were, which made sense to us. Because the way it was going, and we if they were waiting on people to all be clean, it was we, we were never going to get replaced. <laughs> so, I mean, it was cool. Uh, I was happy I was going to be home for Thanksgiving. And then while we were en route, just, you got to leave I mean, again. it just continued one after another, like, our plane landed in Germany. The weather was too bad for us to take off. So we had to stay a whole nother day. And now we weren't going to get home till the night before Thanksgiving. And then we go to our plane the next morning and they decided to delay the plane another six hours. And we're like, well, now we're going to miss our flight. So now we have to stay the night somewhere else. And now we're going to be home Thanksgiving morning. It's just it's a mess. honestly like that excited. I was more excited just to be home. I didn't even care about when I was going to be home. Yeah. It got to a point where like, I lost all faith on making it home the first time, like like in one shot. So I was like, everything eventually just went numb and I finally made it home. Yeah. Yeah. So like, like it, just, it being Thanksgiving really had nothing to do with it. I, it was just I, happening. Honestly, it didn't feel like Thanksgiving. I didn't even realize it was Thanksgiving. So yeah. it didn't really make a difference because with all COVID going on as well, we couldn't have a bunch of people over for Thanksgiving. So yeah, it was just us right, right there and just hit every sure single yeah. one. Okay. We're doing lightning round for the last few because this video is like, 40 minutes long. How many more years do you have in the military? A little over a year. When did you realize Abby was the one? Uh, as soon as I started texting you. <laughs> Didn't even meet her in person yet. <laughs> How many children do you want? Uh, three to five. Okay. Um, what are y'all's favorite things about each other? I guess I have to answer too. Uh, I like your eyes. Oh, thanks. That's so and nice. you have a nice butt. Thanks. <laughs> That's so nice. Mine's the way you talk. You talk my ear off all the time and I've loved it yeah. since I met you. Advice for my spouse, this coming year, I'll be starting nursing school. You're going to have to help her. You're going to have to be a rock. You have to push her through. I always tell Abby, you only have to do it once. So yeah. unless you fail a class, but you only have to do it once. And be flexible and understanding that like your spouse who's in nursing school has like no control over anything. Like clinicals, how early they have to get up when their tests are. Just like be supportive where you can because it sucks. All right, last one. What will y'all's future look like? Hopefully out of the military... Big house, lots of kids, on some land. I'm a firefighter, you're a nurse. Boom. Done. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to my special guest. Mm. So glad you came. See you guys in the next video. Bye.